Okay guys, so we have our cell in action. Very slight leak. Um, maybe an extra very thin piece of PVC around the outside before we have the aluminium uh, channel. We'll sort that out. It's very, very slight, but it is there. Um, if you can see those bubbles, we are actually getting a bit of action. Um, I'm drawing my power so um, at uh, 2.179 volts and that's uh, actually um, connected right at the cell leads. We're getting that from some 400 watt um, sorry 400 amp 2 volt batteries I've got them connected up in actual series here, but I'm only actually drawing power from this one and this one. So I'm actually only drawing two volts. The reason I've done that is so I can use this charger to actually keep charge going into the batteries. Um, I actually have to have them in series because the charger starts charging at about 3.5 volts. So I can't connect it up, otherwise it just draws too much current and um, keeps on uh, overloading. So um, I'm drawing uh, 2.6 amps and uh, 2.18 volts, so around about 5 watts of power, which is I think pretty good if I'm drawing um, 5 watts of power, um, or maybe 6 watts of power, and I'm getting uh, what seems to be uh, a good constant bubbling um, of fine bubbles. Um, because this is a um, a gulpin, uh, a gulpin burble type cell, that's what I think is a good name for them. There's only one inlet and one outlet, so it sort of gulps and then burbles and gulps and burbles. Um, because it's not running um, with a high current, um, it's not really gulping, burbling, it's, it's pretty consistent. So it doesn't have to push out the air and then suck in the uh, electrolyte. Um, obviously if I crank that up to um, maybe uh, 10 amps or 20 amps maybe it might start to gulp and burble but um, yeah so that's where we've got so far I'm going to let that run just for a day just to uh, try and um, get it seated in a bit make sure everyone's happy and then uh, we'll start doing a few efficiency tests and see how I go so that's the cut down cell I've cut it in half and uh, I think that should work quite well. I, I did also sort out the issue with it um, ballooning out like a um, hot water bottle. Um, initially I had a 3 mil gap between the two plates and uh, the volume of water that, that could actually hold just increased the actual weight of the water uh, cell so um, it just sort of bulged out. The more water you can get in there the more it will bulge. So I've I've, I've brought that down to um, one mil gap now and it doesn't seem to be bulging uh, much at all. I will uh, still work on that bulging. I'm, I'm sure it's bulging a little bit, but not that I can see, but I'm sure that it, 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 you know, it's only physics that would make that um, uh, not possible. But um, at the end of the day, uh, if I put some channel along here um, and channel along there with the uprights coming this way it should sort of brace that a little bit and just stop that from wanting to bulge out because these are very thin stainless steel plates the idea behind the experiment is to have as least stainless steel as possible with a copper surface so I will actually try another experiment another time